What's up YouTube? How it goes it? Welcome to another episode. Today we're having a look at the HP Elite Dragonfly G2 laptop. So not too long ago we did a review of the HP Pavilion X360, its higher end version the NV X360, and HP's top of the line consumer laptop the Spectre X360. The Dragonfly Elite G2 is literally HP's top of the line business 360 or 2-in-1 Ultrabook. And of course we're gonna do the usual review to see if this laptop lives up to its rather premium price, all the hype around it, and and if it's of course ultimately the right laptop for you. So the configuration we have here today for this laptop is rocking the latest 11th generation Intel Core i5 processor, 16 gigabytes of speedy DDR4 RAM. Additionally, it is powered by Intel's Iris XD graphics, a 512 GB solid state drive. We also have the latest Wi-Fi and Bluetooth standards on board. It's also worth noting this is the 13 inch variant with a touch captive display. As always, if you guys enjoy this review, hit that like button, sub to my channel. We got lots of great content here, check us out. And we've got lots of great content on the way. So it's a win-win for you and powered by you. Let's get started. Starting off with a quick unboxing, considering this is a high-end laptop, it comes in some pretty standard cardboard packaging. HP could have kind of used a more creative box designer there. Anyway, once you remove the contents, you'll actually proceed to open the box itself. Inside, the first thing you'll find, of course, is the crown jewel, the actual laptop itself in a ton of protective packaging. Once you remove all that hair, it is in that gorgeous dark navy blue color, but more on that in a minute. Beyond that, you do have a 65 watt charging adapter and the slim sleek form factor you expect it to be. Also, it is a braided cable and it is a USB-C out of the box charging solution, fantastic. Also, you do have the wall outlet charging piece and finally, you do have the instruction manual, quick start guide and all the basic booklets that come with the laptop. Moving on to design, the G2 is definitely something to behold. It is a very expensive laptop, but what it's light on is its weight. At just 2.2 pounds, this is one of the lighter Ultrabook in the market and it's great for all day carry around. Also another great thing about this laptop is its gorgeous navy blue color which I'm a huge fan of. Starting off at the top side you do have a smooth textureless metallic finish as you'd expect of a premium laptop and really there's not a whole lot more to see other than that modern looking sleek HP branding you see with a lot of HP's higher end lineups like the Envy and Spectre series as well. Making our way to the side of the laptop, IO port diversity is decent. So on one side, you have a super speed USB-A port. You also have a power button to turn the laptop on or off. As you make your way to the other side, you have a full-sized HDMI port, two Thunderbolt 4 ports or USB-C ports. It's worth noting both of these have the capability for full power transmission both ways. And lastly, you do have a good old headphone jack. Now you may have noticed there's no SD card reader or any type of media card reader. Given the fact this is a high-end productivity laptop, that is a bit of a disappointment in my honest opinion. As you make your way to the bottom side of the laptop, again, you have this nice metallic finish in that same navy blue color. You also have this long air intake vent to make sure the laptop runs nice and cool, a couple of rubber grips. And if you look carefully, you notice on either bottom side, you do have two speaker grills. This is a stereo speaker setup. And of course, we'll be doing a sound test towards the end of this video, so stay tuned for that. As soon as you unfold this laptop, surprisingly, you will find a generous amount of palm rest space available on this laptop, which is usually unusual for 13 inch laptops. So good job there, HP. You also have a relatively wide and large trackpad. And it doesn't just look pretty, it definitely acts nice as well. So it's got a full glass surface finish that again matches with the color, but the clicks are tactile. There's no imbalance, the calibration is on point. This is one of those few trackpads I wholeheartedly enjoy using. The keyboard on the G2 is also spectacular. So while the keycaps are a little small in overall surface area, I have to give it. There's no wobbling, there's no finickiness, they mean business, they're sturdy. But as soon as you press on them, you have a reasonable amount of key travel, you get that perfect tactile keystroke, but it's enough that it's not super loud or intrusive as you'd want in a business environment. Overall, this is a fantastic keyboard from a typing point of view. Also, it is of course fully backlit with a two tier setting system. Unfortunately, since this is the 13 inch configuration, you will not get a 10 key number pad, so keep that in mind. Also, you do have a fingerprint scanner, which is located directly beneath the arrow keys themselves. 
Given the fact this is technically a 2-in-1 laptop, I expect the hinge quality to be top notch and I was not disappointed. HP uses a two-tier hinge system. It's super sturdy, super durable, it does not wobble, it stays in position and it's very smooth when it transitions between laptop mode and tablet mode. Also you have a flush screen thanks to the Gorilla Glass 5. It's worth noting there's no gap between the bezels and the actual screen so you have a relatively thin and sleek chin. You also have very narrow bezels that are in line with modern 2021 laptop standards. On the top side, unfortunately, you have a mediocre 720p webcam. Honestly, this leaves a bitter taste in the mouth given the amount of price I'm paying for a high-end laptop like this, but it's kind of the industry standard, sadly. Whether you're watching some casual movies or you're doing some professional creative work, you'll find this display on here to be respectable at the very least. So you have a standard resolution of Full HD or 1080p with a 60 hertz refresh rate. It is a fully touch captive display as well. It's also worth noting this display does come in a higher 4K configuration if you dish out the extra cash. But the one we have here is the base configuration. In terms of color accuracy, this display again has a respectable amount of color accuracy at 72% NTSC, or for those of you who want the sRGB rating, that's roughly 100%. Colors look nice and lively, and it's definitely sufficient for a creative user. Although the HD Spectre does have a much higher color rating than even the one we have over here. It's also worth noting you have a peak brightness of 400 nits and believe me when I say you're going to need that particularly in bright settings. This is a super reflective screen with a lot of glare and you need to use maximum brightness to often overcome that. Thankfully 400 nits is a pretty respectable amount in terms of brightness. In terms of performance this is a snappy little ultra book. It is like I mentioned rocking Intel's latest 11th generation configuration with the i5 processor. Any day-to-day -day task like web browsing, watching some videos on the web, doing some word processing is going to feel snappy as it should and you'll find this laptop does not struggle with those kind of tasks whatsoever. When you start doing more demanding tasks like let's say 4k video editing for example I was pretty impressed this laptop holds its ground there is very little frame drop now occasionally I did run into some thermal throttling but to be fair I was stacking multiple layers of 4k footage and even then this laptop for the most part handled it like a champ. If you are planning on doing some casual gaming on the side that's definitely possible games like GTA 5 can run at a healthy 30 plus fps at medium settings courtesy of the Iris XE graphics. From a performance and thermals point of view, this laptop seriously impresses me. So at its peak load, you'll hit surface temperatures of about 41 degrees Celsius. However, during sustained loads when you're running moderate to high intensity activities, you'll generally find that this hovers around the 32 degrees Celsius mark. And if you're doing a low load activities, it rarely goes above 24 degrees Celsius. All this is pretty respectable. Now fan noise on this laptop can get quite loud and quite often, again, given its small form factor, hitting a maximum noise levels about 37 decibels but it generally quiets down just as fast as it speeds up. In terms of battery life, it's not bad, but it's not the best either. So you get about 11 to 11.5 hours of battery life on a single charge, assuming you're at roughly 50% brightness doing moderately intensive activities. That being said, crank up the brightness to 100% or start doing more resource intensive activities and that can very quickly drop to around the 7.5 hour mark, which is still respectable. But where this laptop really surprised me in a great way is its sound quality. I cannot believe how much power a little 13 inch laptop has to produce such high quality sound. Seriously, have a quick listen for yourself. This is a fantastic stereo speaker set up by Bang & Olufsen. Six feet napping, they need another fix hooked on like an addict. I got my eyes on the prize and it's changing lives. I wanna live till I die, make a difference right. I wanna give those a need. The final aspect I want to quickly cover is the touchscreen capability or tablet mode on this laptop. Honestly, this is a super responsive touchscreen. There's practically little to no latency, whether you're using your fingers or if you're using one of HP's certified styluses for this laptop. Overall, it's a very enjoyable experience. Priced at approximately $1,820 USD, this is not a cheap laptop. It's not a budget laptop. And it's intended for the users who want the best of the best in the ultra market, particularly from a business point of view. Now, of course, HP delivers in a lot of ways, so you get fantastic build quality. The entire laptop has premium finishings all around. You also have a great trackpad and keyboard, which are an absolute joy to actually use, a respectable display, and one of the best sound systems I've heard on a laptop recently. 
Areas that kind of hold this laptop back from being the perfect laptop include the lack of a media card reader on a $1,800 laptop. Honestly, is just disappointing. There's no excuse for it. Also, battery life, I know a lot of reviewers think is fantastic 11 hours. I think it's average. I really think the M1 MacBook is kind of start, you know, a new bar for battery life. And 11 hours on a Ultrabook is, again, decent, but nothing groundbreaking. Another area where this laptop could have been slightly better is that 720p webcam. I mean, seriously, guys, it's 2021. Come on, when you're paying that much money, just put a 1080p webcam. It doesn't hurt. With all that said, of course, this is, again, a pretty high-end, robust, high-quality laptop. I think if you are the kind of user who wants to get productivity going on this laptop, it definitely lives up to the expectation. It's lightweight, makes it a great all-day carry-around. And overall, your money will be, for the most part, well-spent as long as you're okay with the holdbacks of this laptop. All in all, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, sub to my channel. We got all sorts of awesome content. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your support. Catch you in the next one. See ya.